March is here, and that means baseball is back in full swing again. WEBN traveled to spring training camps throughout the Grapefruit League to bring you all the stories you need to know for the 2009 MLB season. The 2009 WEBN spring training special starts right now. Hello and welcome to the special presentation of WEBN Sports. From sunny Florida, this is the 2009 WEBN Spring Training Special. I'm James O'Leary. And I'm John Russo. This year, 16 teams made their spring training home in the Sunshine State. We've traveled throughout the camps to bring you the sights and sounds of preseason baseball. And we start where else but in Fort Myers, where the Boston Red Sox have been drawing flocks of fans to City of Palms Park year after year. And Johnny, I gotta tell you, tickets down here are no easier to come by than they are back at Fenway. Well, James, the Red Sox are constantly developing young stars to bolster their roster, and this year is no different. WBN Scott Jackson has the inside look at the Sox youth. Ponce de Leon went to Florida to find the Fountain of Youth. While the Red Sox may have it, two years ago in the World Series, rookie Jacoby Ellsbury batted 438 and sophomore John Lester won the final game. Now two more young players are trying to make a splash. One is infielder Jed Lowry. Um, you know, I, ultimately I want to be the, the starting shortstop, but um, you know, if they need me to come off the bench, I'm okay for that, for, uh, for helping this year. Well, Lowry has gotten his wish. With shortstop Julio Lugo out at least two months after surgery, Lowry will be the opening day shortstop. Last year, the Oregon native played in 81 games and drove in the winning run in game four of the ALDS. Another young player is pitcher Justin Masterson. Last year, he appeared in games as both a starter and a reliever for the Red Sox. You know, I, I feel pretty comfortable in both roles, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's just been, it, it's just great to be able to pitch. Yeah, being out there on the mound in the major leagues, that's, that's pretty cool in itself. So, it, it's, uh, yeah, I'll be happy wherever I have a chance to be. The Jamaican-born righty spent last spring training with the minor league club. This year, he's happy to be with the big club. Just a set of confidence, you know, I'm able to come in and not be afraid of where I'm going to be. I know I'm going to be in the major leagues. While Lowry and Masterson are willing to step up into bigger roles for the club, only time will tell how they perform on the field. From City of Palms Park in Fort Myers, Florida, I'm Scott Jackson, WBN Sports. Last year at this time, Jacoby Ellsbury was coming off a Cinderella season. Ellsbury was one of the stars of the 2007 Red Sox World Series team. Now with his rookie season under his belt, the Sox leadoff hitter is looking to improve. WEBN's Daniel Sardina has an inside track to the Sox speedster. Don't blink or you might miss him. Jacoby Ellsbury is perhaps the fastest player to come through the Red Sox organization. He roams the outfield reminiscent of Dwight Evans and swipes bases like Ricky Henderson. But the 25-year-old center fielder says his base stealing comes down to two simple things. A lot of times uh, we're going off times and you just get on base. I think that's the biggest thing and utilizing that speed that I have. Ellsbury's repertoire contains far more than just speed. He burst onto the scene in the 2007 World Series where he hit 438 and scored four times in as many games. His outstanding play has a former Red Sox player drawing Hall of Fame comparisons. Ellsbury's going to be a fine player. He's he was three inches taller and for eight pounds every day he could be the next Ted Williams. That's high praise from the man who played over six seasons with Ted Williams, who many baseball fans consider the greatest hitter in baseball history. With only one full year of experience, Ellsbury's game is not complete, but most fans are quick to recognize his base stealing ability, especially coming off a year where he stole 50 bases, just four shy of the club's record. However, Ellsbury takes just as much pride in his fielding as he does his base stealing. It's nice making a defensive play behind uh, you know, the pitchers. Uh, you know, I know they appreciate it, and it's, it's fun just to go out there and uh, you know, put your body on the line. After the departure of Manny Ramirez and lingering injuries to sluggers Mike Lowell and David Ortiz, the Red Sox offense may be taking a different approach in 2009, speed. And there's no man more important in that role than Jacoby Ellsbury. The leadoff hitter will look to set the table for the Red Sox offense in 2009. Reporting from Fort Myers, Florida, I'm Daniel Sardina, WEBN Sports. During spring training, Tampa is home to two AL East powerhouses. The Tampa Rays, of course, but also the New York Yankees. Last season, the Tampa Rays made it all the way to the World Series. 
We caught up with two sluggers who helped get him there. Worst to first, that is what the Tampa Bay Rays did last season, and it shocked the sporting world. Now the reigning AL champs come into spring training trying to defend their crown. For the first time in franchise history, Tampa will have to deal with pressure and expectations. But the only heat raised third baseman Evan Longoria is feeling is the hot Florida sun. Honestly, I really don't feel any pressure. I mean, um, you know, maybe a, a little bit of heat on the team as far as our performance last year. Um, but I think the way we deal with that is, is um, we just come out here and have fun and enjoy being around each other and just play the game hard. And play hard they did. Last year the Rays won 97 games without any player hitting over 300. Coming into spring training, one of the Rays' hardest workers in the offseason was first baseman Carlos Pena. Pena is the emotional leader of the young ball club, and he is the oldest position player. The slugger credits his teammates for not feeling the preseason heat. And I love these guys. I mean, this is a family, and if anything, I view them all as brothers. And, uh, and um, you know, it's, it's great how this... This team works, you know, we just lean on each other, we support each other. So if anything, I was just being uh, part of the, the, the race family. And uh, uh, I think everyone is, 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 is doing the same thing. That's why this team's got incredible chemistry, and uh, that's very important. Last season, both Pena and Longoria took home awards. Pena a gold glove, Longoria the AL Rookie of the Year. But both corner infielders have huge expectations and high hopes for this season. We know we can do it. It's, uh, it's already been done, you know, we, we went that far. So I think our minds have been expanded a little bit. You, when you believe something, you want to get as close as you can to just to knowing. Well, we know, we know now. Last year we believed, this year we know that we can compete, that we can make it that far. As far as the way things are run and the way we're going about things, I don't think it's any different. I think we're just out here, you know, having fun and, and uh, like I said, trying to work hard to get ready for the beginning of the year. Longoria and Pena are working hard down in Florida to get ready for the season. They want to make sure the Rays are ready to repeat and get back to the Fall Classic. Their first task is to beat the Red Sox on opening day at Fenway Park. From City of Palms Park in Fort Myers, Florida, I'm Johnny Russo, WEBN Sports. Now with a breakdown of the New York Yankees, here is AL East analyst Scott Jackson. The New York Yankees made a big splash this offseason, picking up free agent CeCe Sabathia and Mark Teixeira. Teixeira hit 33 home runs last year and batted 467 in the playoffs against the Red Sox. He won gold gloves in 2005 and 2006 with Texas. Sabathia struggled last year against the AL, going 6-8 before being traded to the Brewers at midseason. With the Brewers, he finished second in Cy Young voting and sixth in the MVP race. New York is hoping that both players help them make it to the postseason. For more AL East coverage, hop onto our website, webn.tv. We have bonus material including blogs from our reporters and photos from our trip through Florida. Coming up after the break, we visit two more AL East teams to give you the complete report on the division. Including the latest on Red Sox starting pitcher John Lesser and his contract negotiations with the team. You're watching the 2009 WEBN Spring Training Special. Don't go anywhere.